discrimination based on credit is even greater. In Newark, uh, drivers with excellent credit, they pay on average $1,238. If they have fair credit, they pay over $2,000. And if they have poor credit, they pay over $3,000 on average. We've also found that New Jersey drivers pay way different auto insurance premiums based on where they live. Consumers who live in majority white zip codes pay far more premiums than people living in majority black or Latino zip codes. And other investigations, including by Consumer Reports, found similar results when uh, auto insurers use someone's education and occupation. People who earn lower wages or less educated have to pay more. And by allowing this to happen, New Jersey is allowing companies to make auto insurance expensive and even unaffordable for a lot of consumers. Uh, they have to struggle to pay and they're forced to go choose between either paying unaffordable things or driving without insurance. And uh, most people do not even know that these factors are being used. And when they find out that someone is used, that auto insurers are using their credit score, their education level, or their occupation, they're outraged and they want it banned. And a month ago, 36 organizations, consumer groups, community advocates, and civil rights leaders sent uh, this memo to the department urging them to ban credit scores, education, and occupation. New Jersey state law says rates can't be excessive, inadequate, or unfairly discriminatory, and the department has the power to enforce this. Several other states already banned these factors. California, Hawaii, and Massachusetts ban the use of credit scores, other states ban education, and still others ban using someone's job. For far too long, low-income consumers have struggled to afford auto insurance. Your premium should be based on your driving record, not on your credit score, or your job, or whatever you went to college. The department should ban the use of credit information, education, and occupation, and auto insurance pricing, and they should ban it now. Thank you. Thanks to Cookie, our DJ, and uh, health worker here today protecting us with our microphone covers. Um, and thank you, Michael uh, and Consumer Federation of America for the excellent work you've done to really uncover these issues in our state. And I should say that we're here today um, because at 1 p.m. right behind us, Dobie and Commissioner Faride are testifying before the legislature, and we need them to take action. Um, next, I wanted to welcome uh, James Williams, Director of Racial Justice Policy for Fair Share Housing Center. So, good morning. Um, good morning. As a housing advocate, uh, we strongly work to ensure that any barriers that are in place that keep people out of housing opportunities are dismantled. Uh, criminal background check credit, social lawful income, eviction violence. But today we're talking about kitchen table issues. Uh, when you sit down at your kitchen table, you start to look at your budget, you start to think about, do I wash clothes or do I dry clothes? Do I pack lunch or do I eat out? And today we're talking about your auto insurance. And when you think about the multitudes of money that these discriminatory practices are keeping away from low to moderate income, and in particular people of color, you think about rental payments, you think about down payments for housing, you're thinking about your mortgage payment. These are the kind of things, these are the kind of untold barriers that exist within this sphere. Housing advocates, we're always trying our best to mitigate and tear down barriers that keep people out of housing. And today, it's one that each and every one of us can think about. Many of us have sat down at our kitchen table and crunched the numbers. How do I get to work? Do I drive or do I take the bus? Do I go grocery shopping do I, or do I order my kids this pizza? And when you think about kitchen table issues and you scroll down to the bottom of your expenses for the month and you look at your, your car insurance and you're scratching your head and you're saying, why am I paying $300 a month when I'm hearing about so many people that are paying so much less? So when we add up all those numbers and we think over a five to six to seven year period, find thousands of dollars that are available that could have once towards that down, that down payment towards that home. It could have once towards a rental payment. It could have once towards your mortgage. So here we are. As a housing advocate, we understand that this is an issue that many legislators, it slips their mind and they don't really tie this to housing opportunities. New Jersey already has a deplorable 
the poor or wealth disparity in this state. We already lead the nation in foreclosures. So when you think about kitchen table issues, when you think about things that are keeping dollars out of people's pockets, those dollars could go towards that mortgage payment. Those dollars could go towards that first time home ownership opportunity. And particularly for people of color, first time home ownership opportunities turned into generational wealth. So in two generations, that one family that used to live in that low to moderate income home is living in an affluent suburb and that child is going on to Princeton and he's returning back home to be a superintendent of school. So within one generation, we can see things change and it can start right now with the kitchen table issue. That issue today being car insurance. So we hope that the legislature will move. We hope that we'll find that kitchen table issues are advocated for as strongly as any other discriminatory issue that keeps people out of housing. So we stand in support here at Fair Share Housing. We seem like the odd group out, but this is a kitchen table issue. I can't stress that enough because those are the issues that go unidentified that keep people from really actualizing what it means to have wealth and opportunity here in the state of New Jersey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, James, uh, for really highlighting, um, you know, this is one of the, I think, most important racial equity issues in our state that people, most people are not aware of. Um, so next I'm going to um, invite up Nicole Rodriguez, who is the Research Director for New Jersey Policy Perspective. Good morning. I'm Nicole Rodriguez, Research Director for New Jersey Policy Perspective, or NJPP, a nonpartisan think tank that focuses on state level policies that promote racial, economic, and social justice. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on this very important issue. As our previous speakers emphasized, many major auto insurance corporations use non-driving related factors when pricing their products. Such factors as education level, credit score, job title, home ownership, and marital status. These practices are predatory. These practices enable auto insurance companies to justify the unjustifiable. Higher rates for black and Latinx drivers than for white drivers, for no logical reason. That's inequitable. It puts an unfair burden on many black and brown New Jerseyans who have good driving records but might have a low credit score because of medical debt or other emergencies, or for simply not having a higher job title or finishing college. That's irrational. It means that drivers of color with no accidents but low credit scores can be forced to pay more than white drivers with good credit and DUIs. That's unreasonable. The image these companies create with TV ads featuring funny scenarios and cute animal mascots is seriously at odds with their practice of ripping off black and brown residents for no apparent reason other than they can. Meanwhile, insurance company CEOs received hundreds of millions of dollars in salaries, bonuses, and stocks in 2020 and 2021 based on windfall profits resulting from the pandemic according to the Consumer Federation of America Review on Public Violence. We will not have an economy that works for everyone if there's a widening disparity between the most well-off and everybody else. We need to reform auto insurance pricing now to increase equity, access, and affordability for all. Racial discrimination in this state by anyone for any reason must not be tolerated, let alone rewarded. Five states have banned the use of credit information, and seven states have banned the use of education and application. We call on New Jersey to immediately prohibit the use of socioeconomic factors in setting auto insurance rates. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nicole. And the reason we are all here today is because of the people who 
don't necessarily know that they're being overcharged um, in this way um, by many, many dollars per year. Um, and certainly, as James highlighted, that adds up and denies them access to, you know, uh, surviving in our, our high-cost state. Um, so next, I want to welcome up one of the consumers who did find out in December uh, that he was being overcharged. Tony Savoni is a Garden State leader and an auto insurance consumer and driver. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Tony Simone, like I was introduced. I'm a chef. I live in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and I'm a proud Garden State leader graduate. I've been a driver for nearly 40 years. When I was living out of state for a while, I didn't need a car, and I was able to use public transportation. Then I moved back to New Jersey in 2016. After I moved back, auto insurers now considered my more recent driving only. Since I was without a car and insurance for a while, however, I have an excellent driving record with no accidents or tickets in the last three years. Last June, I purchased a new car and the auto insurance offer through Progressive was $347 per month, which equaled $4,164 annually. Then I found out that my credit scores are used by many insurers as part of auto insurance rate setting in New Jersey. My credit score has nothing to do with my driving ability, record, or risk. I should not have been charged significantly more because my credit score was lower. Once I learned last year that auto insurers are permitted to use credit scores, occupation, and education in setting rates for consumers, I did over five hours of research online with different auto insurers. As I mentioned, I suspected I was being overcharged because of my credit score because I have a college degree and I wasn't asked about my education or occupation in the telephone application process with the insurer. I was indeed able to get an auto insurance rate with another provider that was significantly lower. Then after my credit score approved through credit counseling and I continued to shop around, I'm now paying $125 per month. That is $222 less per month and $2,664 less per a year that I was paying when I originally bought my car last June. That is $2,664. I have to buy food, put my food on my table, get medical care, or to put gas in my car so I can just go to work and earn some money because gas prices are rising these three months, these few months. The Consumer Federation of America did an analysis in 2020 of credit information and auto insurance premiums charged by New Jersey's largest auto insurance. They found that on average there is a 150% increase in auto insurance rates charged to consumers like me with poor credit compared to those with excellent credit. Like I said, my driving record is excellent. Why should my or anyone else's credit list be used? to change this much more. Thank you. And next, um, happy to welcome Chuck Bell, who is uh, Programs Director for Advocacy at Consumer Reports, another national organization that has been an excellent partner really highlighting um, the, the need to, to make these changes and, and why um, you know, we're standing here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm pleased to join on behalf of Consumer Reports in the call to the New Jersey Department of Banking and Insurance to act to ban the use of credit history, education level, and occupational title in setting auto insurance prices. 
I want to agree with what our other speakers have said. This is a kitchen table issue. But unlike things like residential redlining and segregation, it's a bit harder to see how people are affected. And I want to thank Tony for coming forward and sharing his story about his higher rates that he experienced because of his credit score. Michael mentioned it's an average statewide of $1,300 per year. If you have poor credit, if you have a clean driving record, you're being surcharged that amount of money. But if you live in a neighborhood where auto insurance is generally more expensive, you could be paying double or triple that amount. And so as a kitchen table issue, as James said, that means that it exacerbates the racial wealth gap. You're not going to be able to save for a down payment on a car or a home or a condominium or anything like that because every year you're losing $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 just because you have poor credit. And it's not fair uh, to use credit scores in that way. So we um, at Consumer Reports about a year ago, we did a study on the impact of just education and occupation on the, your rates. We took a hypothetical driver in Hoboken uh, named Sarah Lynn who drove a Toyota and, and uh, she commuted to work. And if she had uh, just a high school, less than high school education and worked as a cashier, she would pay $455 more per year than if she had an MBA and had an executive level job. So we are charging during a public health crisis higher rates to people who are essential workers. And that is just grossly unfair. We're charging higher rates to residents of color all throughout New Jersey uh, just because they may not have a lot of income and wealth, because they have a lower credit score, that's not fair. And so uh, the Department of Banking and Insurance has the power to fix this. Across the river in New York State in 2018, Insurance Commissioner Maria Vullo banned the use of education and occupational title for setting rates. So in New York, we no longer deal with that part of it. We're still fighting to get rid of credit history, which kind of correlates with those other things. But education and job level, it's not fair to charge people more money for that. So we call on the Department of Banking and Insurance to respond to our coalition from a letter from over 30 organizations. The time, the, you don't have to think about this. Let's get it done. The insurance companies are not going to end it voluntarily. They're not picking up the phone. They're just running a bunch of goofy ads, as Renee said. Uh, we need them to take this seriously. Exactly. Thank you, Chuck. So next, I would like to welcome Laura Bustamante, who is Policy and Campaign Manager for New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice. Good morning, everybody. My name is Laura Bustamante, and I'm the Policy and Campaigns Manager with the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice. We are the largest state immigration coalition fighting for policies to empower and protect immigrants. As many of my colleagues here have stated today, the FAIR Act isn't just a bill about car insurance. It's about economic justice for our black and brown communities. This bill would make auto insurance rates fair and equitable once and for all, for all drivers. Currently, black and Latino drivers are being unfairly overcharged for their car insurance. It's not enough to ensure that immigrants can obtain driver's license. We also need to ensure that they aren't overcharged for auto insurance. We urge our New Jersey regulators to legislators to reverse decades of unjust policies that keep countless drivers from enjoying the prosperity they deserve. Though it's been said many times before, it bears repeating. New Jersey is one of the most diverse states in the nation. Nearly one in two New Jerseyans is a person of color. Almost a quarter of us are foreign born. Over 40% of New Jersey kids live with an immigrant parent. These are not overnight changes. They are long-term trends that are projected to continue into our future. If the state is looking to make wise use of the dollars and invest in public programs, like the Driver's License for All program, it must do more to make driving in New Jersey equitable for all our drivers. We know that by allowing companies to use education, occupation, credit scores, marital status, and home ownership status in pricing auto insurance single-handedly puts our communities at a disadvantage. It is imperative that we talk about who these factors impact the most. Drivers, drivers living in predominantly black and Latino zip codes in New Jersey pay 139% of the statewide premium average of $1,459 for a 35-year-old driver with a clean driving record and other standardized characteristics. 
These factors are a double-edged sword for our communities. Historically, haven't been able to obtain credit scores or have a lower income compared to white drivers. It is unfair to charge a janitor with no credit who just obtained his license under the Driver's License for All program with a perfect driving record more for auto insurance than a doctor with a poor driving record. Under the current system, they have to pay more for auto insurance while earning less. The state's existing and low-cost programs are not having its intended effect, simply because the state isn't doing enough to ensure economic justice across the state for all of its drivers. This is why we are calling on Dobie to eliminate these racist and unjust factors to auto insurance rates that negatively impact our communities every day and are not reflective of the diversity of our state and our values, which is to be a more fair and welcoming state. Thank you, Laura. Yes, Doby can act, take action now. Um, so as you've heard, most companies who are operating in the auto insurance market in New Jersey employ the discriminatory practice we are highlighting today, and most drivers don't know about these practices. But by prohibiting the use of education, occupation, and credit scores, we could create a fair playing field for all New Jersey insurance companies and consumers. issues in our state. Discontinuing these practices through regulation at the state level will make insurance more affordable for everyone, help combat systemic racism, and end unfair discrimination in the auto insurance market. Let's stop driving our low-wage workers and people of color further into economic hardship and financial instability. Doby, take action now. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Thanks, great job.